Hi folks, welcome to another PD Afteron webinar. My name is Thomas Winter and I'm a product manager here at PD Afteron. So this is actually my first webinar, so I'm very excited for all of you to be here. And uh, just a quick side note, this is actually a pre-recorded video. So uh, make sure you ask questions because I'll be there in the chat watching alongside you guys um, to answer any questions you might have. So with that, let's get started. And for those of you who are new to PDFDRON, PDFDRON is a document SDK provider and uh, we've been in that space for over 20 years now. Um, recently we've come up with this Appian component plugin that's basically wrapping around our JavaScript SDK and we want to make it accessible for not just high coders but also low coders and no coders as well. Okay, so now it's time for our live demo here. So let me just switch over to my community edition. Um, so I'm already logged into my community edition here. And first things first, I'm going to go ahead and install our PDF drum plugins. So I'll switch over to admin console from the waffle menu on the top right. And now I'll um, inside of the app in admin console, I can select the plugins. Um, option here on the left hand column. And then I can select add plugins here just to install any basically any app from the app market and I'll search for PDF drawn. So as you can see you can find both the plugin component here as well as the plugin connected system. So let's go ahead and click on them and then click on deploy. So I'll start out with the web beer component. This takes a few seconds to install. And then I can go ahead and also add in our connected system here. Okay, so now if I search for PDF drawn in my plugins list, I should see both our plugin, uh, component plugin, as well as our connected systems plugin. Cool, so now I can go switch back to our app in designer and I'll just create a new application for this. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Web Beer, Web Beer Webinar. And I'll just go ahead and keep the, the default settings here for, for permissions. Okay, so now we have a new app ready to go. I'll close out the wizard here and I'll switch over to build mode. Now we can get started with um, getting our prerequisites together. So first off, we need a connected system. You can scroll down and find the WebView connected systems here, or you can also search for WebView if you can't find it. So I'll give it a name here. Now I'll also um, add my user. Okay, and then in terms of security, I'll just make sure every user can access this solution. Awesome. So now I'll go ahead and create a, uh, I'll create a constant for our CSP as well. Okay, so I'll just call it CSP constant. And I will also select connected system from the drop down here. And then as a value, I'll pass in my connected system plugin that I just created from earlier. Yeah. And then I'll click on create. Awesome. All right. Um, I will also create a folder just to store documents in. Um, I'll call it files. And I'll select document folder here. Awesome. And now in here, I can add a new document. So I'll just upload a file from my local machine. Maybe this guy here. Okay. And once that's done, I'll go ahead and create the document. And now I can go back to my designer, um, to build mode, and I'll 
I'll just create the final piece that's missing here, which is an interface. So I'll give it a name. I'll just create it from here. Awesome. So now on the left hand side, under custom components at the very bottom there, I can grab web gear and just drag it, drag and drop it onto my interface. Okay, and as you can see, I get an error right away. Document access connected system should not be null or empty. So all that's telling us is um, we need to pass in a reference for our connected systems plugin here. And luckily, we already have our constant that we created. So I'll just search for that and pass it in. And as a result of that, I should be able to see the UI now. So that's awesome. And finally, let's also pass in a document ID um, of that file that we uploaded earlier. So if I go to that file, no, that's not it. I'll go in my folder and I'll just grab the ID here. So this is the document ID and I can just pass that into our Appian doc ID parameter here. So I'll just pass in 5099. And after a few seconds, it should be loading up our file here. Yeah, awesome. All right, so for our next section here, let's take a look at our Vue UI since we have set it up. We just want to make sure we're all on the same page here, right? Get it, page, document. I'm sorry, bad joke. Uh, first up is our panel here. So we have our thumbnails panel, uh, which shows us previews of each page, which is great for navigating around the document, as well as the outlines tab. So we can kind of hop around and find different section of our document. And this is also great for uh, manipulating our document. So I can do stuff like deleting pages. I can move them to the top or bottom. I can rotate them clockwise. I can insert blank pages. And I can target specific pages for replacement, extraction, or deletion as well. And by the way, these operations are also available in bulk. So if I select multiple pages holding down Shift, I can do uh, bulk operations here as well. So our next panel is going to be our search panel. So we can just search um, for different keywords in our document. And this brings up every occurrence um, of our search results here. And it's all grouped by pages, which is very nice uh, because it makes it easier to find information in your document. Next is our comments panel. So um, every annotation that has been placed onto our document is actually um, going to appear in this comments panel and we can do things like accepting or rejecting um, annotations and we can kind of start a discussion um, on different annotations which is great for collaboration. Next is our menu so you can open files, you can turn on full screen, you can download the current document, you can print with watermarks etc. We have dark mode as well as a language switcher then we have some custom logic button that let you extract selected pages, you can save a document, you can save it as a new document, or you can only extract the annotations and save those. And finally, we have our um, ribbon here. So this is just a way of um, grouping different tools. So if we were to select annotate from our ribbon, this brings up all of our annotation tools. And due to our time constraint, I'm not gonna go over every single tool here, but I just encourage you guys to um, download the component yourself and play around with it if you want to learn more about all the tools we have available here. For our next section of the demo, let's look at our component parameters and some use cases, how we could potentially improve um, the component itself and make it work how you want it to work. So for this, I've created a document picker um, that's just connected to our folder that we created earlier. So I'm passing the constant here that references that folder. And so now I can search for any files that I have stored in that folder. And I've added a few extra files here just so we can demo different things. Um, yeah, and if I select one, it's just gonna save it into our local file variable here. And that just gets passed into our Appian doc ID parameter on the web viewer side. Awesome, so let me open the floor plan here and go over different parameters. So first off, we have our label um, 
You can remove this, and as you can see, the web viewer label will be gone. Um, we can also change our label position, we can add validations, and um, we can change our height. So down here we actually have um, a description for each parameter. And as you can see, you could pass short, medium, tall, or auto um, as your different height. And we can also pass in our license key. So um, you're actually able to download this for free and you can use it as much as you want. Um, but it does come with a PDF term watermark until you purchase a license for it. Our next parameter is the URL. So you can actually pass a URL to a document and load it that way. Just keep in mind, you need to have access to that document. Um, next is our Appian document ID parameter, which you already know. Um, we already have our document folder as well. So this is just the folder that we're saving files into. Next, we have our user display name. So um, if we place a comment, this is actually the display name that's displayed on our notes panel or comment panel. We also have the ability to change or customize our UI. So um, we can do a right click inspect element here. And on each HTML tag, we have a data element value. So let me just pull this up here. So for example, for a search button, our data element is a search button in camel case. So if we copy that value, uh, we can actually pass it to our disabled elements parameter here. So this is a list of text strings. Um, so I'll just wrap it as a list. And then I can pass in my string here, which so is search button. Now, if I refresh the page and close this out, um, if I switch over to design mode, the component will refresh. And now you should um, see that the search button is gone. Once it loads up here, just a second. Yeah, so as you can see, there's no more search button available. It takes a while to load up the UI, but yeah, there's no more search here. Um, but I do like my search, so I'll just go back and remove that disabled element again, set it back to null. And now if I save my changes and do a quick refresh here, um, we should get our search button back momentarily. Oh yeah, there it is. So yeah, any any element in the UI, you can you can disable it, um, hide it, or show it with these two parameters. Okay, next is our doc access connected system parameter. So this is just where we plug in our connected system and the load as PDF parameter. So if we load a MS Office or MS Word file, for example, or an image, we can auto convert it to PDF. So we have all of our PDF features available like redaction, for example. And next we can enable annotations. So if we set this to false, we can get rid of our annotation ribbon here. Uh, we can move our left panel. So our thumbnail panel, we can move it to the right hand side. Uh, we can turn on dark mode if we want to here. We can also uh, pass a language code to change our language. And we also have a custom CSS path parameter available here actually. So you can change the, the look and feel of the viewer itself. Um, we also have our full API, um, which enables features like redaction. So if you wanted redaction, make sure both of these are set to true. And we have our enable measurement. So this enables our measurement ribbon, which is not shown by default. Um, and then we have our enable extract pages. So we can select pages and just click that button and it will create a new document in Appian. Uh, we can basically say what our new Appian document ID would be and where we would save it into. And then our XFDF string. So this is actually an XML representation of our annotation data. Um, things like highlights, comments, callouts, all these things, we can save them in, in an XML string and kind of separate them from the document and then also load them in automatically. 
Um, so we also have the option to save those XML strings to different locations and then load them up automatically again as well. And finally, we have our search term. So this search term is, if we pass a parameter here, it will automatically fire search with that term on document load. Okay, so let's take a look at our measurement use case here. Um, I open up my floor plan and first things first, I'll select my scale. Um, so you can create your own custom scales here. I'll add a new one just for demo purposes. Let's say I know my window is, um, let's say five feet in width. So I'll just measure out my bedroom window here. I'll set my, um, my measurement to five feet and I'll apply it. What this means is basically 2.5 inches on paper is equal to five feet in real life. So I'll create that measurement scale here. Now I can go ahead and measure my bedroom width, for example. So in this case, it's 9.2 feet based on our five foot window. I also can go ahead and do area measurements. So I'll select my same scale here and then I'll measure out this kitchen island. So our kitchen island here is actually 13.8 square feet based on that measurement scale that I created earlier. Okay, for our next use case, let's take a look at redaction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my invoice here if I can find it. Um, but basically what redaction is, it's removing sensitive data from a document. This is great for FOIA um, or basically anytime you wanna send out a document but you, you need to remove information from it. Um, so the way our tool works is we have our drawing tool here. You can go ahead and draw an area and mark it for redaction that way. So you see that red box that um, is the mark for redaction. And if we hover on top of it, we get a preview of what that would look like once we apply the redaction itself. Uh, we also have different ways of finding information or data in your document. So let's say we're looking for phone numbers here. Um, WebViewer is able to find all these phone numbers based on regular expressions. Uh, we can also go ahead and look for emails so on page one, we have one email as well. And finally, we also have credit cards here. So if we wanted to remove credit card numbers from our document, we can just go ahead and mark all of them for redaction and then go ahead and apply that redaction. So now, as you can see, we have um, credit card numbers removed. Let's also go ahead and remove that rectangle that we marked earlier. And as another example, I'll highlight some text here. So that text will also get redacted. Awesome. Yeah, as you can see, all the underlying information and the address has been removed as well as that top right corner. And we don't have credit card information on our document anymore. Let's also add that email in. Um, yeah, and we can also kind of draw annotations and we can export them. So next time we load up this document, the marks are still present, but um, the document hasn't been redacted yet. So this is great for approvals or getting, getting things reviewed, basically. And last but not least, I just wanted to show off the edit text ribbon here. So this allows me to edit um, content inside of my document. Uh, so let's say you've generated an invoice, a contract, or a job offer, for example, but there's a small mistake inside that PDF. You can go ahead and select the edit text ribbon and then just do some inline edits here. So you can actually change the headings to this is a new heading or this is a new header and this actually respects your reflow. So let's expand this here and we can also move that text around. So this is a fairly new technology. Um, but we're actively developing it and improving it. So I'm um, looking forward to hearing any feedback you guys might have on this. And that's a wrap folks. Thanks everyone for watching, for attending. Uh, we're gonna open up the floor for a Q&A session here, uh, but keep in mind, you can always reach out to me. So um, you can find me on LinkedIn. It's Thomas Winter at PDFtron. And you can also send me an email. So my email is twinter at pdftron.com. Thank you.